History in the making. The tempo. The tempo. The tempo. The tempo. The tempo. Dream Skywalker. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Man, any young kids that started going. This seems familiar. Yeah. Yeah. So I called him. People angry. You famous now, man. Hey, that should be making me so mad. I don't know how y'all was raised, but I was raised to fight. Hey, bro, stay in your lane, bro. Hey, bro. I'm back in your DM. What's up, bro? That's all the fuck I gotta say. I try to go back in the past. You will fuck up what you gonna do next. Oh, 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 this is all the fuck. Talk about how I'm a Dallas fan. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll keep that right there. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on, people? All right, man. We back for another episode of the Tempo Show, man. You know, uh, we got a special guest in the building. We have attorney, Talib, say it. Sabre? Sabre. Sabre. Yeah. Gotcha. See, I still <laughs> fucked it up. We talked about it five times before this night started. So, so, you know, um... You know that's the that's um that's 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 my fault. But whatever. Anyway, uh, man, thank you for coming through, man. Like um, to have, like when I see people that are you know like you know just being an attorney and being involved in the justice system and things of that nature, like like we need more of that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, well, like how did you even get started into that? Like you always knew that you wanted to like be a lawyer and stuff like that, or what? Honestly, I would say. Yes and no, from the perspective of when I was uh, younger, I remember my parents always telling me that for career day, and this is maybe when I was five years old, mm. I would come to su school in a suit, you know, have a little briefcase. <laughs> Not you know, a suit. Yeah. Uh, and at that time, I think Johnny Cochran, the O.J. Simpson trial was on. Okay. So uh, I was heavily influ influenced by Johnny Cochran and just the show of all of that. Mm. And really, it wasn't until I went to uh, law school mm. and I was talking to my professors there and they were challenging us to do something more and my involvement in the community getting more and more intense, I saw that it was like a glass ceiling when it came to the law. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. So I'm, and then I came back from South Africa at that time. So I'm like, all right, I went out there and I was doing film. Uh, I enjoy doing film. I right. see this glass ceiling of this system that exists. Right. And now I'm like, so do I want to drop out and just really pursue this film thing full time, or do I want to continue working on this mortgage size debt that I'm, ah, that I'm yeah, getting, yeah. you know, in the school, and, sure. but also do something within the system to where I can uh, affect and help my people, and then outside of the system, since I'm an organizer by heart, you know, do stuff that still bangs against the system. Ah, got you, got you. So what, what part of the law do you practice? Education law, uh, personal injury, and civil rights and human rights. Ah, and that's the perfect com combination because it's like you got the part where, you know, civil rights where, you know, making a difference and then personal injury where you could get lots of bread. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, you know, well, there's, a, there's an intertwining of two of them does, because it, it the does. civil rights, once you get past the first part of like the struggle to do depositions and all the stuff that costs money, what? if you actually get a judgment or even if you settle, then that can be a little lucrative as well. I got you, man. I got yeah. you. And look, I want to. I kind of want to sit on this 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 attorney thing because I'm like I'm I'm fascinated by it. Like I actually, uh, kind of recently, like you know, I, I I'm gonna be doing this podcast thing for a long time. But uh, I was actually thinking about like like you know, dwelling in a law school or whatever. Sure. And so um, you know, what like as far as like being an attorney, like what was like probably the most difficult part like when going to school for it. Um, I always view it as like. It wasn't law school to me was not hard it mm. was really the part of um just the the work that was required in the sense of studying and things of the kind so mm. for instance i would take maybe for our property class because i hated property <laughs> um they would assign maybe 15 pages to read a night and it would take of those 15 pages it would take me three hours to get through the 15 pages to fully understand it to prepare because we have to write what's called a brief so um basically outlining what the case is about and um to get through all of that and just to really understand the material it took about three hours to do and mm. imagine that's just one class so <sighs> you know if you take in how many classes do we have maybe four three or four classes that day mm. that each assigned that amount of work you can see why they say 
you know, if you're doing law school full time and not part time, then you probably shouldn't work. And that's what I was thinking. That's and that's the thing. I was like, I can't, I can't do it. Like I have mm-hmm. to do it part time. But I mm-hmm. heard like the difficulty of it. And that's that's really what turned me off when I was in college because I thought about it in college too. Although I was much more uh, fascinated with history. Yeah. But uh, like just like I had friends that was that was kind of pre law, and just the the memorization of statutes. Mm-hmm. Was, like I was like, oh my god! Like so you gotta like you know what I'm saying? Like 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 I have good um. Like I can see patterns, mm-hmm. but like like remembering specific facts, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? Like line for line. But you don't. Like, but you get. There's ways to. It's not like you're robotic in law school in the okay. sense of you got to remember this finite point. And I'll give an example for the bar exam. Like with yeah, the bar yeah. exam, so what they'll do is sometimes they'll give you uh, uh what is it called an excerpt. So basically the statute. They'll give you the law, and mm-hmm. then they'll tell you, all right, here's the law. This is your fact pattern. Um, and apply the fact pattern to the, or apply the law to the fact pattern. So in law school, when you're doing it, um, you can be, there have been several times where I've submitted exams that I did not know the law, but because of how I articulated it and Mm. how, you know, you finesse, you know what you're saying, if you can kind of maneuver around it, because when you practice in law, you're not going to have to, you're not going up into the courtroom and saying, Uh, you're going to have a book there. And if you need to refer to it, then you can, but you're not going to be remembering you know, statutes off the top of your head, but if you're practicing in particular areas, so for instance, like with the ad, with education law, mm-hmm. you have the IDEA, which governs like special education and those type of things. With some civil rights type of uh, stuff, you got 1983, which is the civil rights statutes. You have um, discrimination type statutes that you mm-hmm. remember just because you're practicing it, you oh, know, okay. but it's not something where, you know, you got to have to remember or else you're going to fail the actual exams mm, okay okay and that's and you know that's that's important to know just because like a lot of times people don't like just for me for example it's like you know you um you look at the 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 task and it seems so daunting you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah. but it's like you know if you take it one step at a time piece by piece you uh-huh. know it, it could be done you know yeah. what i mean and yeah. think about it the people who are in your class are going through the exact same thing right so uh-huh. trust and believe they have this thing called the socratic method in law school so basically, um, you know, you'll get called on and then you have to answer questions. The teacher won't answer the question for you, mm-hmm. but she'll continue or he'll continue to ask you questions to elicit the right answer. Right. So in law school, when you get called on and the Socratic method happens, it's like you out there on an island. The professor, mm-hmm. some professors will tell you don't help him or don't help her. Mm-hmm. Like, so if you're struggling with it, uh, attempting to remember what the passage was about, what the facts were about, you know, and you got to figure it out. But. The thing about it is everybody has to go through that. So even though you may feel like alone in a sense of I don't know this or it's kind of daunting, everybody in your class is pretty much feeling that way. And if they pontificate, if they're faking about it mm-hmm. and saying, nah, you know, I noticed that, da, 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 those be the ones that, you know, are on the bottom half of that curve right. when it happens. Nah, that's real. That's real, man. And, you know, um, especially like I think that it's important that we put people like like that's why I be talking about, uh, you know, um, Nate Brown, just because. Like the man is is a great example of the type of man that you want to be the leader. Like mm-hmm. like like a selfless, family oriented guy. You know, mm-hmm. married. You know what I mean. Kids. Like he's all about it, and he's in the community. And these are these are the people that we need to like push up because we have this like this this idea of just kind of just respecting authority. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying. And then and so like like we um we always gravitate towards that. And you know especially in law. You have like, and we have organizations like, you know, the SPLC, mm. you know what I'm saying? And uh, I might be saying that wrong. I mean, like the Southern Poverty Law Center. I, oh, no, yeah, I said, yeah, well, okay. Yeah. You got them and then you got the NAACP. And, you know, a lot of these organizations that are, that, you know, are supposed to be moving in our direction, you know what I'm saying? Aren't the people at the top aren't even black. Mm. Like, you know, Marcus Garvey famously said, when he went to go see the double the NAACP, he was uh-huh. like, "Oh yeah, they're all white Jewish lawyers." <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Yeah, yeah, they're all white Jews." You know, what I, mean? I mean, he 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 said that, and so like that part of like having that particular like representation mm-hmm. is is really important. So it's not always about like like you know these overall structures. It's like like you want men of of or women, you know what I'm saying, of course, uh, of, of values and ethics Absolutely. that are moving for, like, like they're pushing the progression of your people's agenda. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I think that's, imp- like, so when I, you know, I see you doing your thing, like, these are the people that we should be, you know, 
looking up to and and wanting to be successful because I think you know in our culture today like we we're so focused on the American idea mm-hmm. of and I'm not I'm, I'm I, don't, I really don't have a problem with America per se but like this this idea that power acquisition and money mm-hmm. are the highest values you know what I'm saying well, when you've been reduced as a people to believe that and then you live in a society that promotes that it's like I mean what you're creating this beast so you're creating this monster so if you if you are raising people that have this ideology, who's going to step up to break it? Who's going to step up to challenge it? And then those that do step up, are you going to support them? Or are you going to say, yeah, you're doing well, you're doing good, that's good. And then you're not doing anything. There you go. You know, (laughs) but everybody, the thing about it is everybody has a stake in this. Everybody has their Exactly. Everybody. Hey, look, it's so funny. Like uh, Liberty Snake Bear just said, he said, the Jews are white now. I had to ask. (laughs) 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 Right. I mean, you know, when they, when they want to be. Right. Like, 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 no, I got you. I got you. I got you. But like, it's, it's freaking hilarious. But it's like, you know, it is important that we have people that are willing to do the dirty work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I got to, um. I got a cousin who's like, you know, like in a high leadership position as far as like with like a union. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he it's it's like he he goes through constant tribulations of he's he's surrounded around people that get in these positions and they don't want to do the work, you know, so they don't challenge like like they're just there to collect the collect the check of course and you know what i'm saying because it's, it's a really cool job it's just uh-huh. real chill uh-huh. you know what i'm saying and they not when 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 you're supposed to be as a union you're supposed to be fighting the authority right. like you're always you're always at odds and you're supposed to push your agenda because uh-huh. they're gonna push theirs exactly and then you have people that are just they just go along and don't challenge and when he coming in there he like you know what i'm saying like oh whoa, whoa, whoa. Y- y'all ain't gonna give us this so you want to take you know what I'm saying? We don't get, you know, and don't give nothing. Mm-hmm. And then you see the people around them that is just like, oh, what are you doing? You know, because they don't want to rock the. And it's the same again because we talked before. Uh, before we got on, just about the plantation mentality that has been passed down generationally. So you're gonna have people who don't really want to rock the boat because they got this good job. You know, I think Malcolm X fam- famously said, uh, you know, when we was talking about just setting up your own thing and separating. Mm-hmm. He was like, uh, the Negroes at that time would be like, separate from America? This good white man? You know, where you going to get a better house than you have here? Where you going to get a better job than you have here? And I think that the mentality um, still permeates today because you're talking mm-hmm. about having a good job. You don't want to do anything to rock the boat because that means that it could affect your income. And if you have a family as well, and I'll give a perfect example. So when I was... Sometimes what I'll do is the uh, bail reviews. So when somebody first gets arrested, I represent them a court appointed work. So I represent them before the commissioner. And uh, I had this one client who uh, got harassed by the cops mm. for the most part. And uh, I told him, I said, well, you know, I'm working this case because I, I had just wrote an appeal for this brother who was shot and killed by the cops in uh, Tennessee, in Memphis, uh, a couple of years ago. And I'm looking at what needs to be proven in order to substantiate a claim for like a, what was it? Like a um, excessive force. So with him, I'm like, okay, well, did you file a complaint? He's like, no, nah, I really don't want to file a complaint because that means they can harass my family and there'll mm-hmm. just be more issues. I'm like, look, man, I understand that, but they're going to harass you regardless. You black mm. in America. So you might as well do something in order to effectuate some type of change or at least help your children that you're growing up, uh, that you're cultivating or help yourself and your people generally, as opposed to just sitting by the wayside because they're gonna to continue to do it until the authority is checked. Frederick Douglass said, power can seize nothing without demand. So we mm. cannot continue to live in this uh, situation of victimization. Eventually we're gonna to have to get up and we're gonna to have to fight. That's real. And you know what, we was kind of like what we was talking about earlier before the show, where it was like, we have to, we have to kind of change the mentality of Look, if we want, let's say, if we want progression in the community, then that that means that individuals have to take their self out, like their own personal, their Mm. own personal stuff that they got going on for the greater good of the community. You know what I mean? And it's not always focused on you. And that's what everything, like every everything in media and stuff is is talking to you about. You know, it's what you want, and you can be what you want to be. You know, Mm. if you think it, then you are. This this moral relativism. It's like this whole postmodern way of thinking. And it's like, it's 
it's it's not it's it's that type of thinking mm -hmm. back in the day gets you killed yeah. you know what i mean because when you're not focused on like the winner you know mm -hmm. what i mean if you're not focused on the future you mm -hmm. know and like the children are the most important thing mm -hmm. and that's where we you know once we get like you know like you know once we're like 30 and things of that nature like we've already kind of established who we are right. and so it's like if we want to change a culture then we have to you know focus on the children and educating them and putting them into a position where they can put their children in a better position mm -hmm. you know and and not be so selfish as far as our thinking and start digging more like generationally you know what i mean yeah because even as an organizer i have a couple of organizations here one in dc then one in baltimore mm. uh but uh even as an organizer organizing with the black panther party both old and new you know the lessons that are learned through that because with the old black panther party i was always taught by the elders that the elders have the wisdom, the youth have the charisma, and they're going to execute. Mm. So when you're talking about changing a generation or changing the trajectory of a culture or a people, then you always have to start with the children and you always mm. have to start with right. the youth. You know what I mean? I Even know. taking it to this furthest extent with regards to our women. If you look at any society, mm. when you see the progression of the woman, you see the progression of the race. So when we're dealing with just being in this existence of this Babylonian state of America, <laughs> then you have to understand and understand exactly what your place is, what you need to do to come break out of what society has put you into, and then unite with collective thinking because we're a collective people, you know, right. and we've been maneuvered and manufactured in a way that makes us very individ individualistic. No, that's and that's real. And you know what? Like, that's what, like, one of the points that I, I wanted to get to where it's just like, we gotta, the, one of the greatest strengths of a nation, you know, outside of even like, you know, power and, 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 and certain monetary uh, gains is the power of the family. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. And so that's why it's like, like we, like, I'm like, we need each other, like right. men and women need each other. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, 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 and us like fighting over these different trivial topics you know what well, you know they may not be trivial but you know as far as the greater good uh -huh. they are and it's like we got to get back to uh sh promoting the traditional family because these are the families that are able to f fight through hardship like uh what so i'm i'm, I'm working on this uh this documentary with um this young lady who you know she um she What's she she uh when she was after she got out of college uh -huh. she was um she developed this like this bone disease mm -hmm. you know and she um she was messed up you know she was in a she was bedridden for most of the time mind you and this is like when she just got pregnant so uh -huh. like when she when the baby was born she was like she couldn't walk she couldn't do any of that she had got real real sick and uh -huh. you're talking about like and she just has a newborn baby mm -hmm. so in a single parent household, mm -hmm. that's almost unfathomable to be able to do it, to right. work. And you know, like, I love the fact that like, you know, like her mother and her father, like were together and they were able because of the strength of the family mm -hmm. to hold them together. And now she's wildly successful. Mm -hmm. And so we can't ignore that, that more than likely wouldn't even have been possible at it with a single parent, whether it be a male or a female, you mm -hmm. need we need each other in order to be able to, to to progress forward. And everything else is telling us like, you know, uh yeah, you know, divorce, be happy. It's all about happiness and, you know, abort. And you know what I'm saying? If you don't need the baby, abort it and things of that nature. And I'm like, you know, our population, as far as our percentage uh, of, we're becoming more and more of a minority as time goes by. Mm -hmm. Like we, uh, if I'm not mistaken, like you talk about 15 years ago, we were roughly about 14% of the population and now we're 12. Mm -hmm. And so like people that may, it may not sound like much, but that's incredible. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we, and we, we we're, we're, because we're not subscribing to like, you don't understand. We have to have kids, mm -hmm. you know, to, in order to be able to compete mm -hmm. in this world that they're, you know what I'm saying? And it's, and especially in America where there, you know, there, there's, endless other uh minority or immigrant populations that have their own agendas mm -hmm. as well as the ones that are going on in here right now mm -hmm. and so like bringing back that traditional family to me is, is like it's essential to the progression you know what i'm saying i don't know what you think no the uh, you're absolutely right absolutely right and exact and just some scenarios are playing in my head as you're saying that because if you think about normally 
in traditional cultures, and like I said before, I always go back to uh, uh, continental African cultures. And when you see when a woman has a child, right, the woman is uh, surrounded by like women of her particular nation, tribe, whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it. And they nurse her and they work with her and they sit with her until, you know, she's of wellness and of a uh, sound mind to be able to raise a child and be on her own. You mm -hmm. know? And, and that is separate and apart from the father because the, fa the family is still there. And one of the things that they successfully did when they kidnapped and stole us uh, from the continent was they were able to break up the families. In this area alone, you're talking about the Eastern Shore, uh, arguably one of the largest breeding farms. And a lot of mm. people don't know that in the migration patterns of the Eastern Shore up into Baltimore, specifically where I work in Sandtown and Winchester, you know, you have uh, a high rate of incest and all these things mm. when it comes to um, just sexual assault and just the degradation of our women. But mm. family is critical and important. When I was in Brazil last year, uh, I was able to see what, why there is a distinction between black people who were born in America and black people who were born uh, in Brazil or the Car uh, Caribbean mm -hmm. in a sense of the familial structure because no, in the in the Caribbean, you're talking about islands. So it wasn't as big as, you know, the actual mainlands here. Right. But in Brazil, what I witnessed was how families are still, there's still like that culture that's intact, kind of like the Gullah Nagichi of South Carolina or the mm. Carolinas. You know, the culture is still intact. So you see, you know, the mother, the father, though they are always being attacked now because right. of the, what's going on. But, you know, family is so important because that's where your first power base is you know mm, what i mean exactly and then you exactly. expand outside of the family and, and then you think about what is it family and then i think is is family uh clan tribe and then nation and mm. that's normally how it's built so you're talking about power just think of it from this perspective doing an extended family or looking at you as family if so if you and i have an issue you know what i mean that should not affect how we are supposed to be united for a particular interest or or sometimes you owe me some money right uh you owe me like a couple dollars or whatever yeah you know i'm not gonna sit up here and war with you in front of my open enemy about this uh, money we need uh. to like come together to be able to see all right well we can handle that we'll mm. handle that but at the same time if we have a bigger issue to fight then we need to unite for that so we're talking about the man and the woman and some of these issues that go on if it's not enough to where it would be something that is worth fighting for or worth mm -hmm. killing somebody for, then I think that we need to put that aside and just realize how much we need each other more than we right. need to be a part. No, that's, that's, that's real. And even when, when it comes to money, like, you know, like I feel like in schools, like they need to teach us a lot more about currency. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. And that, look, you know, the, the reality is, you know, we're, we're trillions of dollars in debt mm -hmm. to these international banks. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. so, when it comes the dollar will fail at some point you know what i'm it's saying <laughs> i mean you know exactly and once the dollar fails like these our family structure is the only thing that's going to keep us from collapse mm -hmm. you know and so it's like like you know and even with money it's just a means to facilitate trade mm -hmm. and you know th this whole idea of like of interest you know when it comes to like and that's that's the thing with our money where it's like like we do everything with interest like you know in some arab nations you get to see like they don't do interest at all because interest interest i believe in if i'm not mistaken in the bible it was um thought uh sought as as like usury mm -hmm. you know like because i mean if you think about it like back in the day like i would give you this you know what i'm right. saying you hand me your tile something like that like it, there's an even Water. trade but yeah. it's like when you think about it where it's like now we're trading where I still owe you money mm -hmm. based on the money that you gave me. It's not like it's usury right. and it's like interest is usury essentially. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so, um, you know, we got to under like m money can help. I'm not saying money is not important. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But when we're talking about building families and these structures, that's going to be more important to the stuff that we got coming down the pipeline. And as we see, you know, like in history, like we... I, like I don't want to say that this shit is gonna blow up, you know what I mean? But at it's this time, exa <laughs> exactly, exactly, we are no longer a nation. That's right. Like this is America is an empire at this point. And when you have 
when you're this amount in debt, like this is what happens. Like you see this amount of debt that, that incurs, then you see this, this flux of immigration. You can even see with like the Roman empire and the Ottomans, like that, you know, this crazy amount of interest, this influx of, of immigration, then you fall in, in 20, 30 years. You know what I mean? And, and we need to be, we need to be prepared for that. You, you know? know, it goes back to being a visionary in whatever it is that you're doing too, right. because we're in this current system and state and think, and we can take it to a more individual level. So if you are in a, in a state of being broke, not impoverished, because that's like mm -hmm. kind of systematic, but if you're in a state of being broke, you don't have a little bit of money right now, mm -hmm. you're not going to think, okay, well in 20 years, I'm going to be broke. You're going to be like, okay, well this is temporary. And then, you know, let me do and move in a way in which I can still... That's uh, a positive way of looking at it. That's the way you're yeah, supposed to look at that's it. That's the way you're supposed to look at it. And then mm -hmm. also, if we want to talk about a metaphysical approach to it, then, I mean, you know, you already know that your your words and your mind have power. So you Absolutely. are able to kind of manifest these things. But nonetheless, so let's just use that as an example. Um, you can, In order for you to get out of the condition, you're going to have to see past it. Because if you can't see past it, then you mm -hmm. may not get out of it. So likewise, when it comes to the American system, one, uh, bricks was formed. Uh, Brazil, uh, Russia, India, China, and South Africa already have come together to attempt to bypass the dollar. China is the new imperialist. For sure. Uh, they, yeah. And they manufacture, like you see all these, when we talk about like, should, should we be scared? Mm -hmm. We don't even, we don't make anything. And that's, and, and to be honest with you, those are the things that back, those are the things that give your dollar worth. Right. You know what I mean? Right. These these like why is your dollar worth anything? Because we there's not enough gold in the world to back our currency at this point. You know what I'm saying? And, and look at about <laughs> look at what happened to Gaddafi in, yeah. in Libya with regards to that, creating that whole African currency and then mm -hmm. he was attempting to bypass the dollar and then they went in and what Hillary Clinton said, I came, I saw it. Oh god, exactly. And so, now Libya is open air slave trade going yeah. on out there. Now right? low key, because Mauritania has always is it Mauritania and Western Sahara, they've always still kinda had slavery. Mm -hmm. And you notice it in the Arab nations, it's just not spoken about. But mm -hmm. Libya, because of the cameras being there, now you see that it's going on. Mm -hmm. But they still are enslaving folks. And there. you see and you see that a lot. Like it's it's funny, like you like if you just look at the patterns. Like they demonize all these, like they demonize Gaddafi. Like it's, but one thing that you see is that whenever people go off of the gold, when people are trying to get off of the the international banking standard, mm -hmm. when people try to go on the gold standard, mm -hmm. you know, now they are the worst person in the world. You, know what I'm you have to, but that's the that's the problem. <laughs> but you have to, right? You have to if you're trying to. You have to do that in order right. to create that dissension, and you have to also thwart anybody or any group of people that's coming up think about cointel pro back mm -hmm. in the 60s and the dossier that was written about how we need to j edgar hoover said we need to prevent a black messiah at that time malcolm x was gone and they were look he was looking at elijah muhammad king and kwame Torre or stokely carmichael uh at that time elijah muhammad was too old they said kwame Torre already went to the continent you know uh during the 60s and the 70s so king was left and then they assassinated him so mm -hmm. it's like when you're thinking about just this entire dynamic of what's going on that's why i always tell the brothers and sisters like we got to look from outside of the united states for international perspective because right. once you look at an international perspective then you'll see one that globally you're not the minority you're the you're the part of that you make up part of the majority then you also see that you can reach and this as an organizer this is what happens you can mm -hmm. reach into other communities and other places where your people are and be able to organize and and do different type of resources when we're talking about right. black america back in um during the tulsa oklahoma days and black wall street mm -hmm. at that time black america was at a point where it could trade with other countries prior to the bombing you know yeah, right, what happened. right 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 so the know, biggest terrorist attack in, in absolutely. human history I mean, and, then they, and, it's, and it's funny because they it ain't funny but they yeah. did it again to the move movement in philadelphia in the 80s i'm not yeah i'm not familiar with that yeah so like move that. was an organization with the africas that was their last name but um they were organizers and organizers doing things within the community Philadelphia bombed the mess out that city, man, and bombed because mm. they were like in a compound. So they bombed them. They still in jail. So we, a part, I'm one of the organizations I'm a part of is the International Association of Black Lawyers. We actually work with political prisoners, so the Africans mm -hmm. and some other uh, political prisoners uh, who actually have helped our movement, but are not talked about or not known within mm -hmm. the media because they don't put a put a scope on it. Nah, you know what I mean? So I mean, just understanding your place in the world. Right. And knowing that 
you're more than this little time and ryan coogler said it after black panther like knowing that this tiny box that you're in called america should not limit you yeah no it's real that's absolutely real and one thing i i think i I did want to touch on it as well was um you know a lot of these you know i think i think that you know one of the biggest things is we have these global entities you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying and i don't even think i like these these globalists essentially and i think a lot of it comes from the banks right. it's like they're they don't care about you know white people that either you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying like it's 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 about um it's about control right. you know what i mean control of the population so one of the things we we i i, I really believe that we need to recognize is that like like when you know when jfk like, you know, he could talk all the stuff that he wanted before, but like as soon as in that speech where he was talking about um, you know, it's not what you can do, it's not what your country could do for you, it's what, what you, you can do for your country. country. But if you listen to the whole speech, and mind you, he died very shortly after that, was when he said, These secret organizations, mm-hmm. you know, with these secret organizations, like, you know, like, you know, the CIA, the FBI mm-hmm. are that that aren't tra- that don't have to be transparent to the people. Mm-hmm are essentially what is tearing our country down Mm -hmm. you know what i mean and it's like so we see that these entities don't like it if i'm looking at what the solution is i gotta think like well what do they not want you know and they don't want us to like solidify our families they want that's why like you know that's why it's okay to push you know pornography and all Mm -hmm. and we you know if you like throughout history pornography is used as a tool to you know, um, tear down the, the the male population. You know, make mm-hmm. them make them chill. Right. You know what I mean? Like I, I even said, like I'll be trying to get off this shit. You know right. what I mean? Because it's like, you know, there there is strength in when you ain't when you ain't whacking off. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? And so it's um it's these these entities. So it's we like let's avoid what they're trying to do to us. Let's say and, and we just gotta say no. Like you know, like no, you're not gonna demonize our women. You're not gonna demonize our men we are about family you know what i'm saying traditional family you're not gonna tell us to fucking that that it's cool to abort you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. while you know you have these 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 uh these gov these people in in our gov in our congress that are dual citizenship mm-hmm. they have dual citizenship in israel but they they pr- they don't promote abortion in israel no mm-hmm. no 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 abortion in israel right. but abortion in in the united states though Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you get to see that conflict of interest, mm-hmm. you know, and so you could just it's, it's the hypocrisy is obvious. You know what I mean? It's so intrinsic that hypocrisy is democracy and democracy is hypocrisy in the United States. So mm-hmm. when you're talking about that dynamic, and you're talking about that. It's like you have to. This is why the media is so important to control your own narrative. Because if you're relying on the oligarchs, if you're relying on uh-huh. the bankers and all these different uh, entities to show you what to do. Then you're always gonna be behind the ball. You know? they, like they, they don't have a vested interest, and the same thing when it comes to like if we're always looking for the government to save us. Mm-hmm. And like I was telling you earlier, there's never been a a a time in history that I know of. And mm-hmm. please, like if y'all are watching, y'all like send me something if you see it. Mm-hmm. But it's like there's never been a time in history where a government organization actively brought a minority population out of poverty, like. There's never, yeah. never been that case. So when we look to like, oh, well, you know, if we if we put in a black president, and you know, if we, you know, if we get people in more positions of power of a, in a structure that we know is corrupt, exactly. like that somehow, if we just get enough black people in this system, then we'll just like, you know, what I'm saying, like it'll everything will be cool, you know. And it's like, like we can't be reliant on the government, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's like, like we have to start trying to do things on our own and really focusing. I'm not saying like, you know like you know completely black pill in this shit, you know what i'm saying but i'm talking about like as far as focusing on on the values that matter you know and so like you know people like you that's like out here doing things man I, uh, like it's, it's it's truly appreciative and so i wanted to ask uh you know as as you how long how long have you been practicing four years in december four years four years yeah what was what was what was a case that you went through that you know that tore you up Actually, it was my first murder trial. Now, I don't practice criminal law anymore, but mm. uh, when I what was this 2016, so I just passed the bar in 20, 2015, and um, I had a mentor of mine 
who was about 10 years older than me, and he taught at Howard as an adjunct professor. So he was like, yo, you know, I want you to, to I've been working with him for some time up until mm -hmm. that point. But he was like, you know, I got this big murder trial uh, up in Baltimore, BGF, that I want you to, you know, work with me on. I'm like, okay. So, you know, when I tell you, a month, it was a, a trial lasted a month, you know, a straight month. So the the uh. the the schedule for me would be to get up at like maybe four or five in the morning, have to meet him at his spot up in Silver Spring. We drive up to uh, Baltimore, have the hearing, have the trial from like what nine to maybe four, sometimes five. Drive back down and then come home, take a quick nap, and then I'm up all night looking up new arguments and looking up legal issues, you mm -hmm. know, just to see if we can kind of get them out. But um. The reason that that case was uh, hit me the most because um, the client was, so I'm 30, he was 29, he was like a year older than me at okay. that time. So we're literally sitting at the table and, you know, we're just shooting the breeze about regular stuff. He knew about George Jackson and, you know, some of the other things, the political aspect of BGF wow. that um, I was like, oh, okay, so we're talking about books and revolutionary things. And uh, after seeing the evidence, the evidence did not indicate him at all. There were no bullets. There were no, um, or there wasn't anything to connect him to the actual crime. He wasn't even, they relied on someone who was a turncoat, essentially, that was in the organization, but had something to lose because he already was backed up with time. Mm -hmm. So um, when they said guilty, and that, mind you, that case is on appeal now, but when they said guilty uh, and we talked to the jury, and this is how I knew how important, it reaffirmed how important um, the media is when we talk to the jury, they say, "Yeah." We said, "Well, what about the inconsistencies that we saw in it?" And he said that he was he was killed in the what was it the base the the first floor when he was killed in the basement or something like that. And they was like, "Oh, well, you know, he a part of BGF, so he did it." And that was it. And we talking about we talking about people that were our age that was on the jury, people that were uh, maybe our parents' age that was on the jury. It only was like one or two white folks that were on the jury. So it's like when you have this this mentality that's permeated within, you know, society about just certain stereotypes about mm -hmm. things. It's like they still the state still has to prove their case one. And then two, it's a pity because it's like, yo, this dude could have been me. If because we were literally uh, talking about just different resources and the access to different resources. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. a smart cat. But um that case really tore me up to the point where the other two attorneys actually talked to the jury. I didn't because I was like so heated after mm, that. I didn't even right, really right. want to mess with them at all. And I went to the literally the next day I had to hop on a flight to go to South Africa. Uh, we did some political work out there. But um, the entire time, like my mind was still on that case. You know? <sighs> yeah, man, so, that's 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 rough as hell, man. It's like yeah. so, you know, it's 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 um it's crazy, man. But like, you know, there's always, uh, you know, a light at the end of the tunnel. And it's like, you know, it can get done. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We we can we can start focusing and we can build a better community if we focus on, you know, just the I, I believe like the family structure and just really start being a little bit more selfless mm -hmm. and focusing on the next generation. You know what I'm saying? So. All right. So what's some things that you, you want people to look out for? Uh, so um, if you're in D.C. Uh, or the DMV area. Two organizations. So one is called the Movement for Black Power. And what the Movement for Black Power is, is we uh, organize in community. We do clean sweeps. We got one coming up uh, on the first, I think the first weekend in June, uh, where we clean different neighborhoods within the community. We tend to focus on D.C. Uh, we have, I do Know Your Rights classes. So I'll, you know, teach some stuff based on like maybe uh, voting rights, uh, lead, how to engage with police officers, those type of things. We have uh, a food pantry that we're developing. We also do um, feed in the hood programs. Uh, people who are homeless, we uh, feed them. And just a whole bunch of, like we have political education night as well. Mm -hmm. So we do a whole bunch of things. And, and where, where is it at again? This one is located across the street from Howard University, 733 okay. Euclid Street. Okay. Uh, it's the ECAC um, is the name of the building. And then up in Baltimore, uh, my organization, the Tupman House. Now, both organizations, I work with the new. Well, I work with the new Black Panther Party and the old Black Panther Party, in the deep movement for Black Power. So y'all should come out and check that out to get some real game from some OGs. But uh, up in uh, Baltimore, the brother Eddie Conway, he was locked down for 44 years for wrongfully killing a cop, 
And um, through him, man, I met uh, Bob and Danny Glover. Mm. I met um, Kathleen Cleaver. I met so many different heavyweights in the community doing work. You know, but there we got a farm smack in the hood. Uh, what is it? Wow. Over Gilmore Homes on the west side of Baltimore. We do political education night there. We're teaching the kids entrepreneurship skills. You know, um, we got crops growing so the family can come from the communities and come just pick it. You know, so you got fresh fruits and vegetables there. Yeah. Uh, we do a whole bunch of things in the community that really builds up. And then we're like a collective. So you have different type of professions that are in there. And it's not your quote unquote, what I call the petty bourgeois type uh -huh. of people that come up in there just to take pictures and things like, nah, we get our hands dirty, we go to work, you That's know what lit. I mean? So we're yeah. actually moving toward the liberation of our people. Well, there we go, man. That's lit, man. So y'all make sure y'all check that out, man. Hey, look, man, it was a pleasure having you up in here, you That's know? Hey, look, we, hey, look we, could, we could do this for like three, four hours. Yeah, I would keep it a thousand, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But I ain't going to take this time, you know? I know you got to make moves. Yeah. But um, yeah, man, so y'all be on the lookout, uh, like, I'm not going to mess up the name. I'm going to let you say it. All right. Talib Saber. Right. And where can people find you at? Uh, I'm on my website for my law firm is www.thesaberfirm, T-H-E-S-A-B as in boy, E-R-F-I-R-M.com. I'm on Instagram, Talib, T-A-A-L-I-B underscore S, uh, at the Saber Firm. Facebook, my full name, Talib Saber. And... Uh, I think that's my YouTube channel, the the Cyber Firm, because I do some film work as well. Mm. So um, you can check some stuff out there uh, where I collaborate with like different artists from around the world, um, different activists, organizers, all that stuff. Well, that's dope, man. I'm telling you, man. Hey, look, y'all go check this powerful black brother out, <laughs> man. Hey, look, I want to thank you for coming through. Thank everybody for listening, man. Uh, this is the Tempo Show, man. We're going to holler.